My name is Anil Mankar. I'm a Chief Development Officer of Benchip. So the future is bright because we are at a stage where we have developed the technology, we are able to license it. And this is what we are doing right now. Our business model is, of course, main focus is uh, have the IP available uh, that uh, that can be integrated either into the sensor. Uh, you don't really need for a robot doesn't really need a high hi-fi camera chips with ISPs and all that. Uh, you should be able to take a uh, CMOS image sensor and depending on the application, have a next uh, uh, a small uh, AI to, uh, uh, IP next to it to uh, for a factory automation and things like that. You can actually do that. The chips Anil, are, yeah. Is are, are there any car, you you have car man, are there any car manufacturers using your chips today? They are evaluating technologies. We are developing some LiDAR data set uh, so applications for them. They will probably, uh, they may not use this, this current chip because this current chip is not ASIL compatible and things like that. But we expect that they will, once they are happy with our network that we are working with them, they might ask us or they might ask one of their suppliers to develop a uh, uh, certified ASIL AB certification and it, we expect it to be embedded into the chip that are already going into the car. There are lots of companies selling camera chips into the car. There is no reason why they can't take our IP and do it all ASIL compatible and all that. But this current chip that we are developing in TSM 28 nanometer is not certified for that. But this, they are using this for testing all the network, evaluating power performance and once they're happy, we expect them either them or their vendors to be a IP customers for us. Okay, so you're in development now, but you're you're not yet certified. Um, is there a roadmap for that certification? Can you even uh, ballpark are, a date, or you don't want to talk about it? Uh, actually, uh, we don't have plan to be a. Uh, our, our customers are the customers we are working with are already ASIL certified to be in in a car like camera chip guys, ultrasound uh, lidar guys. So we'll depend on them to really do because automotive certification, all that long process, and we're not trying to be a big manufacturer of um, ICs. Our, our focus is to enable AI into all of those applications by supplying the IP. Gotcha, thank you. Uh, Anil, so are you working with any defense contractors? Uh, uh, yes, some of the defense contractors, actually, so, um, yeah, they are looking at uh, the neomorphic uh, uh, solutions. There are not that many people supplying your know, solutions. So yes, defense contractors do want to look at some very small shape at those kind of things along also with NASA. This is publicly announced. NASA is looking at neomorphic uh, solutions, especially because of it can learn uh, new objects quickly on ship. So yes, there are uh, programs that we have some announced, some not announced, uh, and they are testing their networks. Uh, some of them using Meta TF right now, and some of them actually have our EAP customers who are actually testing their networks um, on the chip that we are given them. Well, if are you really interested? What are the areas you're really interested in this going? Like, where do you think this could add the most impact? So, I, of course, uh, we, our, our hope is beneficial AI, so medical analysis, and so luckily we actually got approached by some people who are doing COVID analysis, breath analyzer, things like that. But image processing, most of the AI is happening today is in image processing. We have a good solutions for that. I think it will develop. It will be, uh, I mean, it will go everywhere, but I think our focus seems to be image analysis, object detection, classification, whether it's for factory automation, robotics, or, or automotive. And then some of these uh, sensors that are new coming in for uh, uh, healthcare, uh, there's a good opportunity to really uh, make it much more easier uh, and beneficial. So, we, so we'll have the chip as a USB dongle, PCI plug-in card. It will work also with Raspberry Pi, so you can have lots of application. This is the problem that we have. We, we have a very disruptive technology that seems that fits into a lot of application. We can't do all of those applications. So we're depending on our ecosystem. We're enabling them, our partners. They can take some form of this IP and try to product, go into product, into whether it's refrigerator, washing machines, cars, in, in car, um, driver monitoring systems, or uh, uh, other application, maybe games, or maybe in some other application I'll show you, Beth and Liza, right? Maybe a good example will be um, Test the smell for a wine. 
and some of the guys might want to do that, right? So uh, applications are numerous, but we can't. Uh, we are, our, our position is to enable our customers to go into those market. Don't go directly into the end market. So that's uh, that's a good question because this is the kind of thing. What we are doing is we are actually taking most most popular applications like mobile net v1 of different resolution size variants and uh, you can do person detection object, image classification that op opens up factory automation uh, wing uh, doorbells kind of applications face detections so those are popular applications and we are converting all of those into um, uh, our model zoo that's available similarly object detection segmentation um, keyword spotting audio applications for listening to maybe some uh, specific sound like gunshot, uh, gunshot um, uh, noise or some vibration uh, from a um, ball bearing from a train those applications or just keyword spotting and remote control adding new words to that one of the things that neuromorphic computation does is it's very good at uh, uh, taking advantage of sparsity of the data so uh, one example I gave you was sparsity of data was a, this dynamic vision image sensor where instead of sending uh, 2 million pixels every frame, 30 frames per second, it only sends you the address of the pixel whose intensity change because there was some object there and you can process that. Those are uh, very low power but uh, very fast uh, um, uh, response time classification problem that we already are solving. We actually gave a demo of the, this uh, DVS camera uh, detecting hand gestures and giving command to a robot earlier. Uh, similarly, 3D point cloud, by definition, 3D point clouds are very sparse. LiDAR data is very sparse. Today, people are taking LiDAR data and converting into a 2D kind of image because it's much easier to process image and detect object. There is no reason why we can't do that directly in 3D point cloud and take advantage of that. We are working on some of those applications. And also there are other sensors that send uh, the 3D point cloud uh, points. And that's actually a, one of the applications that we have is uh, later on coming in, but because it's neuromorphic and uh, because it's so small uh, and it reacts to uh, the pixel where the things are changing, here's the application of person detection video. This is the same visual backward uh, person detection network that we converted into Akida, and it can detect a person in a way far it's just someone is here, right? Because it found a person uh, there. Now this is good for wing camera because it cannot detect, sometimes it cannot detect person unless it's too close. While Akira can actually do it uh, even at a, a very small portion of the frame with the person in it and is able to detect it very reliably. Another example that we have is actually 3D point cloud I talked about. This is a specific sensor that actually is giving us 3D point cloud data is almost like a, the 3D point cloud data can come from to, um, to stereo cameras and with the with the time of flight data kind of things, but this is a specific um, net, uh, sensor that our partner Magic Eye has created, and it's giving you dots that you see uh, from the sensor, and we are able to analyze it. When the person is in the frame, you can see the dots of shift. So we actually train the network to to recognize that this is a person. So you don't need infrared sensors and other sensors to detect a person before you start recording it. So this, this is again, very simple, very low power um, application of detecting a person and detection, detecting some activity and a solution for 3D point cloud sensor. Similar solutions can be done for LiDAR data and things like that. And I want to make sure Akira actually monitors which beer you're drinking. So let's see if you can teach it, train it to uh, classify different beer bottles. So first thing is this is actually directly happening again on Akira. The beer bottle shapes are same, but there's a different marking. So it's able to learn from that image. And uh, it now it can, can distinguish, you're just labeling the beer bottles, this is a birch beer. This is actually happening uh, directly on the chip. So we can classify different beer bottles, label them and start testing it. This is the Corona Light, not Corona Premier. So you can label it as different label. And uh, once it so now we have six different classes. A rolling rock is detected that it's a different beer than a bush beer now. 
directly on the device Corona Premier. Now it's, it's having difficulty whether it's Corona Pre Premier or Corona, uh, Corona Light. Okay, maybe we can help it by giving one more shot. So this is a two shot example for learning that object. And this is the second shot. So now it's able to distinguish with Corona Light and Corona Premier very clearly. It needed two shots for because it, the objects were so similar. So pretty good accuracy. Here's a good example of if, if it's not in focus, this is what human eye will also do, but we got it in focus and now it can really uh, see that it's Corona Premier. So it is actually, think about this is object classification. You wanted to just distinguish uh, different uh, beer bottles. Uh, so when it's being uh, uh, being delivered, you can keep count of that. It was so easy just to train it with one shot. It detects it and is able to distinguish it. Sometimes it might be one or two shots, but this is really the image classification application that we see, uh, whether it applies to the fruits, whether it applies to factory automation, because nobody has time to go back to take multiple samples of the objects, go back to the cloud, pay, pay somebody of at least at a consumer level and get new data, train, um, collect and load a new um, weights into your network. And now it will do what, what I just showed you. All of that is bypassed. You don't need a first thing. You don't have to go to the cloud. You don't have, have to have multiple samples, but it can distinguish between almost similar bottles but because the pictures of the things are different, it generated different spike patterns. And it learned from that to distinguish between those two. Well, so what we have done in Benchip is created a neuromorphic technology incorporated into Akira chip first chip. Of course, we are making it uh, possible to take that technology and put into every sensor. So that every sensor can be smart and size it to the requirement of what the problem we are trying to solve. Um, and it's really helping uh, sustainable AI, beneficial AI applications, and it's going to enable almost every IoT device to have a capability to do analytics on the device. The one shot learning that we showed you is a key feature compared to everybody else. So don't miss the bus, get on the bus and come along for a ride with us to unfold the future of AI and make AI possible everywhere. Anil, yeah, um, I, I I I did find the the beer demonstration was was really impressive. So thank you. But I I have to wonder how you know that was on a white background on a white pedestal. How well does the one shot training uh, work with a noisy background? Uh, yeah. Actually, we have some demos that we were showing. Last time I did a demo here, we, sh we were showing a small tiger that it learned the tiger features from a toy. And it was able to distinguish the tiger in a, from a different uh, picture from a frame in a jungle and things like that. Think about uh, that beer bottle shape and the, the logo that you saw. Uh, that's where the, 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 the uh, uh, intensity difference. And the spikes from those features that were generated is what it latched onto. So it does pretty good in a noisy background, um, and it can distinguish tigers uh, in the forest in a big, bigger size. And all of those features, by the way, uh, we preserve the feature that we train because ImageNet, mobile net uh, uh, network on image the data set was actually had multiple images of a tiger in different size, shape, and form. That's why it needed that. And then it was able to extract those weights that can uh, see the tiger from size. Uh, it was agnostic to the size, orientation, and uh, and the distance. So we maintain, we kept those, and that's what we, we are taking advantage of that. Um, Anil, you had a USB um, <laughs> chip version of this thing. I saw, how does that work? And is that something that's going to be available in the future or? Yeah. So, so it's, a, it's a USB connected uh, with, with an Akita chip on it, is that? Yes, yeah. So what uh, you will see, let me go back to the, the picture of the chip. It does have a USB or PCIe. Yeah, I, I saw that it had USB yeah. as well as PCIe yeah. as well as yeah. IT, yeah. So. Yeah, so we're using this, in, this is a plug-in card. This is an M.2 PCIe card using this PCIe interface. A USB dongle will use the USB interface and you can plug into Raspberry Pi 
and now the acceleration uh, is happening on this chip. So it has the flash um, and the DDR uh, if you need it. But yeah, that's the USB dongle, just like Intel Mobile S chip or Google TPU has a USB stick that you can plug into your PC or a Raspberry Pi. It's exactly something similar. This chip will be available as that and will be supporting a Raspberry Pi Pi 4 model. We are actually taking over event time on the environment, porting it to Raspberry Pi. So in August, September time frame, uh, next time we do this, we'll probably actually show you on a, this thing running on a Raspberry Pi. Today, if you see a live demo, you see it on a PC. So um, how much would a USB stick version of this sort of thing run if you were to buy it in, uh, I don't know, quantity or something like that? Yeah, it, it could be. I mean, uh, um, uh, we have to really see the volume and all that, but it's really a sub, uh, so $49, $50, dollars those kind of things. This is what people are selling. Yeah. Whoa. Interesting. Thanks. Yeah. Do you have plans to kind of e-commerce it the way that uh, the Mavidia sticks were so that we could kind of buy some of these off the uh, kind of almost yeah. B2C uh, to dab with? Yes. Yeah. So what we are planning to do is, I mean, of course, you can take the uh, the... USB stick with Akira in it and plug into a PC so that environment exists. We are actually porting the environment to Raspberry Pi or an ARM based system um, also. So, yes, the, you can download um, whatever is required uh, from our website. And our idea is some, some people might take, um, a, there's also a version of M.2 PCI card that can you can put in a laptop or you can actually, there will be a PCI plugin card that can go into a Raspberry Pi 4. So people are taking Raspberry Pi, doing some analytics on, on, on the thing with the accelerator, putting in a box, and they can really uh, have put that in uh, our chip into that box and sell it as a solution. So we, we definitely enable that. And that and then I ran a Pi hat, is that how you configure this? Thing? This would be a solution that's sitting on top of the Pi? Uh, yeah, you can the, actually, Raspberry, the new Raspberry Pi either has a USB 3.0 uh, yeah, port does. and also has a uh, single lane PCIe plugin card if you wanted to sort of speed. So both are available. So yeah, you can definitely make Raspberry Pi box. It will almost, you can, we're already testing that internally and we it should be available pretty soon. So talk to me about the I3S, I2C thing. I, so that's a, yet another way to get data in and out of the yeah. system? Yeah, I2S is actually for the audio sample. Let's say you have a MEMS microphone that you can just connect it there and uh, take audio samples. Now, of course, from an audio sample coming from a, microphone, you got to really do some extract uh, MFCC component features. So the ARM M4 can actually do that. So we meant this to be not just a AI accelerator, but it could almost be an IoT device for some of the applications. Uh, ITC is a new standard that can connect multiple sensors like pressure, temperature, humidity, all those things can be on that. So we can bring that low rate data into the M4 class CPU. It can take the samples, prepare them to be given to the, the Akira Neural Fabric. And some of those networks, you can have your multiple networks on that chip. You could be doing sensor fusion on this chip by taking the audio, maybe a small video coming from somewhere from a, a USB or PCIe or some other three or four sensor data, or it could be accelerometer data coming or, or I3C, whichever way you get the data in. And after analyzing all that, the control uh, sensor fusion of three or four sensor, sensor data can be happening on the M4 class CPU and take some actions. So this could be a edge IoT device that I talked about. Albeit it has, of course, the ARM M4. Mm. 